actually, the reason, although I'm not a card-carrying anthropologist, the reason I have anthropology envy is that I actually think that the close observation of anything in the world will pay tremendous dividends yeah, if you absolutely. just simply pay absolutely rapt and, and persistent attention to it. So, you know, E.O. Wilson, as a little boy, was interested in ants, and yes, he kept he was. looking at ants, yes. and kept following ants, and he learned a whole hell of a lot about ants. Well, I think that's true about anything. So My own epiphany as a conservationist came in 1953, while a Harvard graduate student, searching for rare ants found in the mountain forest of Cuba, ants that shine in the sunlight, metallic green or metallic blue, according to species, and one species I discovered, metallic gold. I found my magical ants, but only after a tough climb into the mountains where the last of the native Cuban forest hung on and were then and still are being cut back. I realized then that these species and a large part of the other unique, marvelous animals and plants of that island uh, and this is true of practically every part of the world, which took millions of years to evolve, are in the process of disappearing forever, and so it is everywhere one looks. As humanity grows ever more populous and powerful, natural systems that have been stable for millions of years are in turmoil. Plant and animal populations are rapidly declining and species are becoming extinct faster than ever before. Scientists have begun to call this a mass extinction event. The human juggernaut is permanently eroding Earth's ancient biosphere by a combination of forces that can be summarized by the acronym HIPPO. Uh, H is for habitat destruction. And that, into that we can put climate change. The I in hippo stands for invasive species, you know, like the aforementioned fire ant. First P is for pollution, and the second P is where we throw it in, that's overpopulation. O is for overharvesting. The hippo juggernaut we have created, if unabated, is destined, according to the best estimates of ongoing biodiversity research, to reduce half of Earth's still surviving animal and plant species to extinction or critical endangerment by the end of the century. We're at Chester Mine in Massachusetts, in Chester, Massachusetts, um, documenting white nose syndrome in um, a number of mines in this area. We first heard about it by getting phone calls from the neighbors down the road who were reporting bats dying in their yards and hanging on their, their houses and landing in their trees in, um, that would have been early February, which is unusual for bats to be out and about in early February, and also um, that they were out and about in the middle of the day. So on bright sunny days at below freezing temperatures, bats are supposed to be hibernating and not flying around. There are about eight to 9,000 bats here. Um, there's a potential of perhaps 90% mortality within the next two years of these bats, and judging by the number of bats we are seeing flying right now, as well as picking them up in the backyards of folks and seeing them on the houses, I think we're going to have high mortality this year. There may be a temptation to treat the biosphere holistically, and the species that compose it as a great flux of entities hardly worth distinguishing one from the other. But each of these species, even the tiniest prochlorococci, are masterpieces of evolution. Each has persisted for thousands to millions of years. Each is exquisitely adapted to the environment in which it lives, interlocked with other species to form the ecosystems upon which our own lives depend in ways we have not begun even to imagine.